And can you tell us what you're playing? I'm playing La Redención by Angelica Negron, which is my accent. So tell us about this piece, about the composer. And so this piece, according to the composer, kind of deals with the moment in time where you um, approach someone that you love in your life about something that needs to change. I see. And tell us about the composer. Where is she from? So How old is she? I think she's in her 30s. She's quite young. Um, she's Puerto Rican American. She does more kind of like electronic stuff, but this is one of her few solo piano pieces.
It's really wonderful, interesting, interesting piece. So, um, yeah, so I don't want to get in your way with anything that you're doing because I think you're playing this really beautifully. I often think about um, something that Rachmaninoff said. Rachmaninoff, of course, amazing composer, but also um, one of the greatest pianists. Um, but he gave a concert and he came back stage after, I think after, during intermission, and he was very upset. And he was saying, ah, I missed the point. And people said, you played beautifully. What are you talking about? You missed the point. And he said, ah, I missed the point. And he ended up explaining that, that he understood a piece of music, whether it's a short piece or a long piece, that it would have like a, a point to it or like a, a moment that's maybe the, either the climax or the catharsis or it might be the quietest moment, but like a moment that it was going to that sort of like the whole piece hangs on this, like you some, somehow build to this piece, to this, to this point. And everyone thought he had played beautifully, but somehow in his mind, he felt like there was a point that he, he had missed. And one thing that I love about your playing is, is a really beautiful control of your soft dynamics in particular. Sometimes I wondered in your phrases, kind of on the smaller scale, maybe between phrases, if there can be more of a sense of what you want us to feel is important. Um, can we look at the beginning? Mm -hmm. um, so it starts mezzo piano, and we're mezzo piano for uh, eight bars, and then the textures change to 16th notes. Mm -hmm. And I thought even between these two opening sections, maybe it could feel like something has changed. Even though may maybe we haven't gotten to the main point of the piece, it's still unfolding, but what would happen? So maybe play the first eight bars for us, and as you're playing them, maybe think what is the point of these eight bars? What, where are we going? has a shape that I didn't hear the first time you played it. So do you want to describe what you did? Um, well, I was thinking that I think at the end, I think there needs to be a sense of like disappointment there, and then, mm -hmm. and then yeah, a little bit of more action here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, interesting, there is more action, but it's also pianissimo. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a different kind of motion. Can we try something? Um, Christian Zimmerman recommends with a very slow piece, he says you should always play your slow pieces fast at least a few times just so you can feel where the phrase is more obviously. Do you want to start from the beginning? And maybe just to see. I think every few days, just to remind yourself, just so you feel, I mean, kind of following the contour as it goes up, mm -hmm. like a singer would naturally get louder as it goes up. That might be a, a good thing, just to remind yourself. So it starts the first three bars, there's just a single note in the soprano. Could you play the lower voice with your left hand and the soprano with your right hand? Mm -hmm. I'd love it for it to feel like two people talking or like violin, viola or something. Yeah, so the, because we have a long sustained note in the right hand, maybe that can have a little more presence. Yeah, which of those voices do you think is more prominent? Which one do you want to be more? I think the top one is that what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. 
for me they feel a little bit equal. Yeah, I want to still hear the bottom line, but yeah. anyway. So maybe less of the bottom line? Try, see what happens. So maybe a little more of the top, especially with the long sustained notes. I hear that more clearly. I wouldn't. I think interestingly, we'll hear the lower voice more distinctly if you make it more different. It'll just feel like something like a different color, and it will be distinct. Um, can I hear one more time from the beginning? Mm -hmm. The clear sense of where you're going, what the point is of the phrase, and then when the second voice comes in, make sure it, it feels important. Second voice. I like the opening more. I would just be sure there's a sense of phra phrasing where you're where you're going. What is the point of the phrase? Um, when you get into this pianissimo, is this something we expect? No. How do we make it feel like something we don't expect? Um, I, well, I think with the just the dynamic level, even being very soft helps. Yeah. I've also kind of been trying to change my touch a little bit. Uh -huh. um, I've been playing more flat fingers in the first eight bars, and I want to play a little more fingering in that part. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to feel when you play the pianissimo? I guess I want them to feel a little bit of the agitation, I think. Just mm -hmm. a little. I'm not sure, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> agitation. Uh, is it a pianissimo agitation? Yeah. So maybe not too much. Yeah, it's like um, you're suppressing it. Yeah. It's always interesting to me, like, how do you make something feel like a surprise? Like, if I know it's coming, but maybe you guys don't know it's coming, but uh, and you have this piece memorized, how do you make it feel like you don't expect it? So maybe you could experiment with not taking too much time there so we're setting up not setting up the ending too much um too much time i don't know see what happens see, yeah. see if you can make it feel like it's like we don't expect it to happen okay. good and what if it's a more distinctive pianissimo like a new yeah. sound So, could you make it twice as soft? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that sound. I like how it's very different. We create music. It's never the same. Like even, you, you've memorized a piece, you've performed it 20 times, or 100 times. 101st time, it's not the same as 100th time. You had something different for breakfast. We're in Miami and the weather's a little bit different. It's mm -hmm. a one degree, I don't know, warmer than yesterday. I would, I would have the mentality that, that every time you play it, it is new. Because I think it is literally new every time you play it. Do it differently this time. Don't do it the same way as that. Play a different way. Can I try it? 
I don't I don't play this piece, but Timing of these sixteenths. I don't know, can you be interested? up but every time you do it it can feel it can feel different can you surprise yourself like you're not even sure how it's going to unfold yeah 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 Golson said that the piano is a box of decrescendos so when you have this Listen to how that decays, and then the next sound can be even a level lower than that. Okay. Yeah, so. In this next phrase, where where are you going? Where do you want the the phrase to continue to? Right there. Okay, and I think this moment is also when the sixteenth stop. Th there's a sense right of like there. arrival when when she writes mezzo forte. So I wonder if both hands can feel like they line up. So especially at a slow tempo, we have to be careful of how much time we take. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more time. Can I try one for just a second? One, sometimes with long notes, I like to kind of re-strike them so I hear them. Yeah. It helps with timing and I think it also helps to listen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Da -dee -da -dee -da. Yeah. 
listening to the long notes and making sure we're not cutting things up too much. Um, this is really beautiful. Can we continue? Thank you. Yeah.
the fact that it's it's forte until the mm -hmm. mezzo piano. Maybe you should yeah. keep your left hand louder. Yeah. Dee, da, dee, da, dee, da. It's interesting. We could kind of take a poll, and there could be like five or six different like ways of, of looking at it or doing it. It's just somehow it has to be convincing.
They're just, they were just, this is great. It's wonderful. You know, I think with, sometimes with the dynamics, I think there are times that you could be more specific. Like sometimes when he writes um, the really soft things in particular, and it's really busy, occasionally I thought that, um, and I'm, I'm kind of nitpicking here, but, but I wonder if you could get a more interesting pianissimo color. 
especially when there were more notes, making sure it doesn't sort of blend in at all to the kind of mezzo fortes. Yeah, could we, maybe let's get into it. So we start as pianissimo here, and then how long is it pianissimo? And is that note also pianissimo? So how do you want that note? What's the envelope of that note? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like what, what, what's your intention behind it? Yeah, I mean, I think I want a note that sort of comes quickly, like has a quick attack, but then it's okay. a really slow. And also pianissimo subito. Do you feel like that's a pianissimo subito? right hand by itself there yeah. can I hear that slowly yeah sometimes I feel like you played and some of the notes are a little bit lost and sometimes I hear it and there's a like there's a clarity to it to it Can I hear that slowly again, that ascent again? Very slowly. And shaped how you want it. I feel like you kind of peak on the last three dynamically. Is that what you want? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so why, why do you think he goes from this mezzo piano to then the pianissimo? What are we supposed to feel? Yeah, I would think some kind of, uh, like we're building up, we're building up, we're building up, and we start back down again and build up in a different okay. way. Okay, can you, can you show me that? One question I have, and I don't, I don't know this piece, but one question I have is, sometimes it, it feels like, like the rhythm is is more localized, and then sometimes there are sections where it feels like, like here, da 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 da. I almost wonder if you could get more into a groove of something, even if it has kind of this freedom you're talking about, but da 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 da, almost feeling a bigger rhythmic unit, da 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 whatever that is. And then onto the next page also, this, this sense of like this ascent and descent, and maybe somehow feeling like these connect. And this, this especially makes me think of the, of the Debussy where we have those, those arpeggios that go up, come up and down. What happens if we kind of feel rooted in this rhythm? I'm thinking sort of the um, bum, dum, bum, bum. somehow feeling it's, it's a little bit of a triplety feeling, right? Yeah, and it's interesting here. He just writes slower, right? Mm -hmm. And before there's like a little retardando on each of these, and then there's a speeding up. Somehow I think it could feel more like it's grounded in a rhythm, even if it's a rhythm that sort of has a lot of motion to it. Yum, bum. Oh, 
Uh, there's a one, two, three, one, two, one, one, two, three. That's the right idea. I, I somehow I think the rhythm could feel more convincing. That's kind of vague, but somehow it could be grounded in something. Could you try this one more time, indeed? Uh, So the groups of three, maybe the first one is more. And even here, di da dum. But do you, do you think we should feel that? Two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Like that more, I can feel one, two, three, one, two, one, and it's and, and it's not exact. It's sort of, yeah, but I think we do want to feel somehow an underlying pulse. Sometimes I, I I felt like I was sort of lost at sea a little bit. Like I'm not sure where is ground. Maybe there are moments where we want to feel that, um, but I would kind of be aware of that. Um, and then in here also, this ascent, descent, and then ascent, descent kind of feeling the rhythm behind that. It's a right idea. So the bottom and the top and then there's one, two, and these come a little closer. Dun, dee, dun, dun, bum. I, somehow, I think you can organize it better. Do you want to try it? play this I don't I don't quite feel a pulse I mean he says 67 and again I don't know how literally it should be taken but I don't know is there a way for you to feel like it died that it feels like it's kind of inevitable like you feel like that pulse is ground personally like something like that. For me, it helps the phrase sort of make more sense. Should we keep going? if the accents in the right hand DT can be the sound can be more separate from the left hand I like how the left hand feels a little more rooted in a rhythm
kind of voicing do you want on these dyads? Mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily form a melody, it just kind of just sounds really deep to me. And then here, more melodic, more soft. Yeah. One thing I wonder if this stuff, if it could almost feel like it continues more. Whatever sound you kind of started with, so it kind of feels like there's a continuity down. I feel like that now kind of belongs together a little bit better. Um, the ending, I had a question. Um, so it's pianissimo, yeah, and then. Sorry, the first one is not quite loud. And I wonder, does this feel? Com should it feel completely static until the end, or is it gradually coming down? How do you feel it? Um, usually, I felt it pretty static, but then this time the first one came out so loud that I. Mm -hmm. Can you show me? Show me what you mean for the ending. So is that the pianissimo sound that you want? Can you play like this one? Can you play it? Can you play it? Make sure I hear every sound. Can you play left hand by itself? Can you roll it? Can you roll it again? Can you play all those notes? I think sometimes with those chords, I don't hear all of the sounds. I hear kind of kind of an indistinct. Especially, I don't think I hear the C. The, the, Yeah. It's quite a dense, quite a dense chord. Yeah, I think it's nice to hear all of those, all of those sounds. Um, yeah, really great. I would just think about how the, the feeling of the pulse, even if it's manipulated quite a bit, if it can feel somehow more grounded through the sections to take us through so we kind of feel the continuity, even if it's on the terms of the piece. Um, but it's wonderful to hear. Bravo. Thank you for playing. Should we take like a...